Hi, welcome to our 30-day growth challenge. My name is Abriana, and I'm one of the pastors here at The Way. Yesterday, Pastor Marco talked about James chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and it talks about the many trials that we would go through and about how when our faith is tested, our endurance has a chance to grow. And this next verse, these next couple verses talk, also speak to our faith. And so we're going to go straight into James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. And so it says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask Him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything that they do. So there's a lot here, but first let's just start off with defining what wisdom is. So it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise, having insight and good sense a wise attitude, belief, or course of action. So maybe you're in a new job, maybe you're a newlywed, maybe you're just in a circumstance or a situation that you've never been in. You don't have the knowledge, you don't have the experience, you don't have the good judgment maybe even um, to get you through this situation. But guess what? The wisdom of God will make up for your lack of experience, your lack of knowledge, your lack of insight, your lack of good judgment. He can give you supernatural insight into a situation, supernatural wisdom. And so if it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. And I love that they use the word generous here. What does generous mean? It means showing a readiness to give more of something than is strictly necessary or expected, larger or more plentiful than is usually necessary. So God wants to give you knowledge, insight, wisdom, good judgment, a course of action, but he doesn't want to just answer that little, I'm just going to give you a little bit of wisdom. No, he wants to give you wisdom in abundance, more than is even necessary. Our God is a generous God and he doesn't just give you exactly what you need, he's gonna give you even more than what you need or what is necessary for your situation, for your circumstance. Our God is ready, he, he's not, uh, I don't know if I wanna give them wisdom, I don't know if I wanna give them answers, I'm gonna hide wisdom from them. No, he's ready and willing to give you more than you even need. But there's one prerequisite, one thing that you need before he gives you all of, all of his wisdom and all of his answers and his experience and his knowledge, one thing, and that is faith in God alone. Verse six says, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. What does faith mean? It's assurance, belief, fidelity, reliance upon Christ for salvation, something that is believed, especially with strong conviction, belief and trust in and loyalty to God. So if your faith, and I love how they use the word fidelity and loyalty in the definition of faith. That means faith and loyalty are tied. If you're faithful to someone, that means you're loyal to them. If you have faith in someone, that means you're loyal to them, you support them. If you, I, I have faith in this person, I know they're gonna do this, I know they're gonna do that. You have faith in them, you're loyal to them, you stand by their side. And this is the same thing with God. If your faith in God is divided, your loyalty to Him is also divided. You can't have one without the other. And so we're supposed to have loyalty to God's wisdom and His wisdom alone, not the wisdom of this world, not your own wisdom, <laughs> not having faith in your power or your works, not having more faith in a self-help book or a podcast or a magazine that you read than you have faith in God, not having faith in a horoscope or a person and their advice that is not biblical. I'm not saying you can't get advice from, you know, your your discipleship group leader or your pastor or, you know, a friend from church who is giving you sound biblical advice that is God's wisdom. That's amazing. <laughs> Take God's wisdom from them. But I'm not saying don't don't accept wisdom from just anybody, wisdom from just anybody, because not everybody has God's wisdom. Not having faith even in Buddha or Muhammad. Some people think that you can have faith in Jesus and grab what you want from Jesus and then come and also, you know, take meditation from this religion and take this and that from Muhammad and Buddha and all these different people, or even Mary or a saint. We should not have faith in Mary or a saint. Um, and I know some of us come from a Catholic background. Mary and all the saints, I'm sorry to tell you, they're all dead. They're not alive. <laughs> You're not going to receive anything from them. The only person that you can receive something from you, the only person you can receive true wisdom from, understanding knowledge, is God and God alone. Some of us think that you can have other sources of wisdom and think that you can just choose whatever one feels right that day, but that's not the case. <laughs> There's only one source of true wisdom. And... Um, the other part says, 
do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. So unsettled and waver mean um, basically the same thing. Uh, to waver means to be undecided between two opinions. So he's saying don't be undecided between two opinions or courses of action. Don't fluctuate an opinion or allegiance, which is loyalty um, or direction. So don't um, go back and forth between your allegiance to God and your loyalty to God and another person, another person's wisdom or another religion or anything else but God. To be unsettled means not to not be decided, determined. It means to be doubtful, an unsettled state of mind. You haven't resolved or worked it out yet. And when you're not decided and determined to get the wisdom from God and apply it, you'll just go wherever the wind takes you. And that's what a wave does, really. It goes where the strongest wind blows. That's where it grows, and that's where it'll crash. Who knows where it's going to end up? Who knows where it's going to crash? It just goes wherever. And those who see God's way... Um, as only one of many options will spend their lives being driven back and forth by whatever wind blows strongest, by whatever feels right in the moment, by whichever or whosever voice is loudest in that moment. And that's not what God wants for us. He wants us to be stable and steady and fixed on him. He wants to be the first and final stop for all your needs, for all the wisdom that you need, for every answer that you need, it's found in him. And the last part, verse seven says, such people, so if you're like this person, maybe you're searching all over the place for wisdom, you're searching all over the place for truth. If you're like these people, such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. And it seems kind of harsh, um, but it's the reality <laughs> of not having um, complete and total faith and trust in God. It says they will not receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything that they do. So you're not going to receive anything. It says don't expect to receive it. What does anything mean? It means anything to any degree, to any extent, in any way at all. You're not going to receive anything from God at all, which is scary. So don't consult other sources looking for another answer because the one that God gave you isn't the one that feels right, isn't the one that you want to hear today. Maybe God is telling you your answer is plain and simple. It's to forgive. <laughs> it's to forget. It's to turn the other cheek. But you're like, mm, I don't really feel like that today. I don't want to follow that. So I'm going to follow my cousin's advice, which is to key his car or to leave him or, you know, to do all these crazy things that people give us advice that is not wise. Um, we're not to seek wisdom from those outside sources, outside of God's will. Trying to live by God's wisdom while also following other forms of wisdom from another source will always lead us in two different directions. We will always be deciding whose wisdom feels more right in, at any given moment. And that makes you unstable. And the last part says you'll be unstable in all of your ways. So not just unstable in this circumstance or this part of your life. That will leak into the rest of your life. You'll be unstable in every single thing that you do. Maybe you've been in a situation or you know somebody, you know, who goes from this job to that job and God told me I need to um, start this business and then they give up on that and then they start this business and then they get a new car and then they're in debt and then they are in this relationship and that relationship and they're just unstable in everything that they do. It's because their faith in God is unstable. And so the only way to have a stable or a sound life is to trust in God and his wisdom and his word alone as our only source, not our feelings. We don't go by our feelings. We don't go by what a magazine told you to do um, or say. We don't go by whatever book you read that is not <laughs> godly wisdom. Um, so let's not be like a wave of the sea going everywhere, searching for wisdom, searching for truth, searching for answers, because all the truth and the wisdom and the answers that you need is found in God and God alone. So have faith that he's going to come through. Remember, he is a generous God who wants to give you the answers. He wants to show up in your circumstance. And if you just trust him, he will come through every single time. Thank you so much for watching. And I encourage you, if you learned something or something stood out to you today, um, leave a comment comment. We want to hear from you. We want to respond to you. And also invite your friends and family to join in with us on this 30-day growth challenge. I know that you're going to receive something and they can receive something too. Let's pray. 
God, I just come before you and I thank you for each and every person who is watching, God. And I ask that you would just bless us with your wisdom, God, that as we put our faith and our trust in you and you alone, that you were going to show up for us, God. You were going to show us the course of action. You were going to give us knowledge that we need in every single circumstance. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.